Five Forces Theory is a model that evaluates and checks the competition of an industry, okay? Now, the competitive environment has a series of elements that you need to check in order to make sure that you know and you're aware about how uh, and where profits could be made. Now, the first issue, as you can see here, is what is the threat of new entrants? Now, people and companies make a mistake sometimes and they just check who their competitors are, their known competitors. And of course, they never check who can enter the market. It's not a question of who's in the market, but how easy is it for someone to enter the market? It's called barriers of entry. How, how easy is it for someone to just set up and start competing with you? So that's a good question to ask when you're assessing your competition. Second question is actually, what is the power of your, of your buyers, your customers? And I wrote an article recently on this, on the fact that customers have lots of power these days. Uh, and it's growing. If you think about yourselves as customers, uh, you actually want things instantaneously. You want instant gratification. We, we always want uh, the best. And, we, and most companies these days are talking about customer centricity and the customer experience. So we do have a lot of power. And in free markets around the world, uh, customers do have a lot of power. Now, if you have a lot of power, it means you have a lot of options which means in the second area of competition analysis that you have a lot of power compared to what you had in the older days. Concerning customer power, you can also say that customers are spoiled these days because they have too many options in many cases. And of course, many, many companies are making their best offers to attract customers to come and work with them and, and use their product or service. So customer power is crucial and the higher the customer power there is, the more competitive the environment. It's quite, quite obvious, as you understand. The third element in terms of competition is the power of your suppliers. And this depends on the industry, as you understand, because some industries have very important suppliers that they need in order to manufacture their good or their service, whereas in other areas, suppliers are not that dominant. So they don't have to, they don't dictate prices as I, as, as I usually say. So it's very important to check if your suppliers have power because in a certain way, your supplier may be competing with you. And maybe not today, but maybe in the future. The fourth element has to do with substitute products. Something that does the same thing in a different way. So a best example could be the telecom business these days. As you know, you know, we used to pick up the phone and make calls and then we had Skype. Skype was a substitute product and is of course. WhatsApp is a substitute product which is taking away money from the telecom companies, which of course they are getting some money back from the internet and the connections and of course the, the access to network that they're selling. But in a certain way, it's taking away money from something that you are offering. So if you combine these four elements, which leads us to the fifth element, which is the rivalry, if it's intense or not. It's the combination of the threat of new entrants. How easy is it for someone to enter your market? What is the power of your customer? Think about that. What's the power of your suppliers? Think about these as well, these issues. And finally, the, the, the threat of substitutes that may actually uh, enter your, your, your industry and uh, make you lose more profit. And these four areas influence the fifth element, which is how intense the rivalry is. And that's when you start listing who your, competitor, who your competitors are to make sure that you find ways to always continue to learn and change and innovate to make sure you always have a competitive advantage.